everybody's so creative guys i had to hit you this early morning with the funniest thing when i'm doing my work and getting downloads about stuff it's not always so heavy and serious this is a message for someone it is of serious nature but the way they gave it to me was just so funny so i don't know who needs to hear this but for those of you that are new here, I'm a professional intuitive empath, and my name is Monette, and this is my channel, Evolve with Monette. Now that the business is out of the way, everybody's so creative. This is a, a phrase that is coined by Tanera Docklet, excuse me, Docklet Shovel. Y'all, the dyslexia just happened. I do not have dyslexia, but, um, Chocolate Double Productions. Why did I say Docklet Shovel? Um... I think it's because this is a confusing situation. This is a case of people pointing fingers at each other. And what I was getting, and y'all, it's like 4.30 in the morning, so just bear with me. But what I was getting was um, someone blames someone else for uh, a spiritually transmitted disease or an actually transmitted one. And they were like, no, I got it from you. I got it from you. No, I got it from you. Now, this is not someone in your life specifically. This is someone that you may have known from your past. Maybe your angels are giving you insight into something that happened. But the way that they gave it to me, I cackled. I laughed. And that's not because spiritually transmitted demons are funny or the actual transmitted ones are there before the grace of God go any of us. That's not it. This is about specifically someone who may have shunned you, left you, triangulated you with somebody else that got something from somebody else and they were just passing it back and forth. Whether it was spiritually transmitted demons or the other ones, the actual ones you could test for, they were passing it back and forth. Now the person that you knew maybe that you were connected to and that you loved and cared about was thinking that maybe because they were all behaving recklessly there was some level of reckless behavior involved here this could only happen if there was three so this is not everybody's story you could have had a one-on-one -on -one partnership with someone who was crazy and this has nothing to do with you this is for people that were in three person dynamics and you know that you were talking to somebody but they were talking to somebody else or they were dealing with somebody else and you found out about it. I just heard everybody so creative. That is specifically belongs to this content creator who reviews food. That's a hot mess. And the reason that all of this is part of the message is because whatever was going on was a hot mess. So she looks at all of these TikToks that people do, and then she kind of does a voiceover and acts like, doesn't it look like something you want to eat except you wouldn't? Doesn't it look differently different except it's not? If you guys are, live in the world, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Um, and then she'll be like at the end of it, ah, are you okay? You're eating? Oh my God. Ah, and she like screams. It's hilarious. So, um, what I heard was, everybody's so cre creative. And what my angels were saying is that someone was lying to someone else about the fact that they gave them something, whether it's spiritually transmitted or otherwise, and was like, <laughs> the, what my angels gave me, I know I shouldn't be laughing, y'all, but you're out of the situation. That's why I'm laughing, because they said, tell your collective that they're safe. They're free of the spiritually transmitted demons. They're free of the actual STDs. Their pH balance is no longer being like thrown off by that y'all know that's a real thing for us ladies sometimes when we're dealing with someone and our angels and ancestors is like we don't like their energy they will throw off your whole ph balance and it's a thing that i've heard from so many clients so many friends and it has happened to me as well so you have to pay attention because your our body is always communicating with us our body is always being like girl <laughs> i don't like this one you might love that one but your cuckoo <laughs> your boom boom and your body will be like mm -mm -mm. guess somebody else to do it it will absolutely shut it down so this one is so funny to me and again i'm not making light of any spiritually transmitted demons or actual stds because again they're before the grace of god but in this situation very specifically this might apply to one or two of you everybody's so creative someone had something knew they had it passed it on to someone else that you knew maybe you even warned somebody about this other person this is definitely a triangulated person of three situation maybe you even warned somebody else about this person you're like hey be careful this person 
I don't have a good feeling about it. Maybe you didn't know. I'm not saying that you had some psychic intuition about the fact that that person actually had whatever they had. You just picked up that the person was bad. And you may have warned your person, whomever they were, to stay away from that person. You may not even know this has happened. Meaning, like, let's say you did stay away from the person. Maybe you ended your relationship with that person. They are dealing with a situation now, whether you know it unbeknownst or not, is what I heard. Or unbeknownst to you is what I heard very specifically, that they are trying to play the past blame game shift with the STD. A hot mess has ensued, hence Tanera, Doclet, I keep saying Doclet Chubble. It is such a confusing situation. They got themselves in a confusing situation. That Doclet Chubble that I keep saying, it's Chocolate Double Productions, is literally the tagline at the bottom of her TikTok, like her water impression so that no one can steal her stuff because hashtag is the internet and people will folks be stealing. Um, and so she had to kind of protect her, her, her intellectual, you know, integrity that way. But I keep saying Doclet Chubble as I'm channeling this message. It's chocolate double. So something was mirrored. Something was flipped. Something was kind of like inverted. Everybody's so creative. <laughs> and and your angel said, everybody's so creative. And here's why they're saying that. Because they were watching these two fools. And they were like, now nah, we told, like, okay, because I'm hearing we told them not to. I'm hearing don't touch it, silly boy. That's from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Someone, your angel Angels, their angels, whoever works with them, the person that you love had spiritual insight and guidance, or they had some level of depth or understanding about spirituality. Okay, so they knew better, but they overrode it because they were tempted. Everybody's so creative. The devil's creative. How about that? That's the channel message I'm getting right now. Everybody's so creative. So they knew. And they overrode it. Maybe you even warned the person. But the angels were watching it. I'm hearing folly ado, which is like the fool, the two fools, <laughs> or two of us fools, or something like that. Folly ado. The angels were watching this happen, guys. And it, almost like they were sitting back and they were watching, like, they're showing me the Greek tragedy faces, you know, like the smiling face and the laughing face. They were showing me, like, this was something that they watched play out with popcorn themselves because they were like, mm -mm -mm. we told them not to do this. So whoever they may have chose over you has them now actually stuck in a situation. Now, here's the thing. As a reader, I'm not using any cards this morning. I have my cards here. I might pull a couple on it, but I'm not using any cards this morning right now. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, I hate so much when readers are like, the person that you love, your divine feminine and masculine is stuck in this situation. Bullshit. You are never stuck. Y'all, I have been so attracted to people that I could quiver by their touch. Like, I have really, really wanted people in my life. But when I noticed fuckery, I was like, that's it. Time's it. That's enough. Well, you are never stuck. Now, it takes time to get there. That has happened multiple times in my life. Even when I was more unhealed and more unhealthy years and years ago, I still have relationships that I walk clean slap out of, uh, even though the person may not have known that that was the way I was going to go. Because they might have thought I was under their spell or whatever the case may be. I specifically think of things in my 20s where I definitely had F-boy and F-girl situations that were abundant to me like many of you. I walked out of connections all the time. Now, I do know that sometimes we are stuck because of kids. That's the thing that could make us feel stuck, or financial situations. But a thing that gets people, quote unquote, stuck, I hate the word stuck, but I want, because we have free will, and we can exercise it, we have karmic relationships that we're always working through, but a spiritually transmitted demon, meaning energetic swapping of bodily fluids create sexual magic. Please understand and follow me here. And so if someone is low vibrational, you can catch energetically their energy, what they have. That can happen if you're just hanging around somebody. We become like the people we spend the most time around. So that's just a pretty basic metaphysical principle, but it's heightened with spiritual energy. And that's how come you guys, um, I'm talking to somebody directly here. Somebody watched somebody kind of disappear before their eyes. Like you were seeing the person, maybe in love with the person, maybe dating them, maybe they were your friend. I don't know what the case was, but they started sleeping with somebody else and you watch the contraction of the spiritually transmitted demon. For those of you that are not familiar with that, somebody here is. You literally watched how the Jezebel spirit, if you will, or the energy of a person comment below if this is your story the 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 energy of a person shifted before your eyes and you're like i know you not <laughs> i know you not saying i know you not get thee behind me like you literally watch them change into this evil low vibrational person what i'm hearing is the spell is broken but everybody was so creative the angels were watching it 
And they were like, this is hilarious because we kept telling them no via their ancestors and their angel spirit team guides, whatever, right? You, you told them no, whoever's listening, you said, nah, 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 don't touch it. And then they said, tempted to touch, tempted to touch a little down. I need you so much. That's a little West Indian song. What happened was they touched it. Touch it, move it, bring it, ch- relax it. That's Buster Rhymes. If someone busted, I'm telling you, I can't make this up. Everybody's so creative. This is specifically about a sexual encounter that derailed somebody that you know. They literally lost their mind, they lost their life, and they lost their cleanliness in every way, from spiritually transmitted demons to the other way. They got caught up. And the person pointed the finger at them. I got this from you. No, I must have got it from you. The person that they dealt with knew that they were burned the whole time, or knew that they were low by vibrational or knew that they were for the streets knew that they were carrying all kinds of spiritually transmitted demons themselves like they had eaten up all the streets Ooh, gobble gobble anyway we'll get out of that as you two they had eaten up the streets they had put their mouth on everything they knew that they were dirty little vibrational nobody gutter snipes right and they went to the person that you were with and that's why y'all y'all ask me all the time How do you vet and how do you know? You don't know. If you're spiritual enough, you will be protected in spite of yourself. I will tell you that has been my experience. There have been so many times in my life where I'm like, I want it. (laughs) And my angels are like, do you? And it had nothing to do with the other person maybe being uh, bad to a certain degree or dirty or anything like that. They just were not for me. Or, Or, hey, hey, ego, check it. Check it, check it, check it. I was not for them. (laughs) Sometimes... God has other things in store for other people that are much better than what you are. Okay, I know that hurts to say, it hurts to hear. But you may have brought that person to spare because of whatever you're trafficking in. We all have things we're working through. So I never like it to just always, you know, empath, I'm always riding for you. So that part. But sometimes that was hard for me to hear in my younger years. Like there's a better person for that person. The person that said that to me, quick story, um was about an ex that was one of those exes that I would never talk to again. There's always, I usually am friends with my exes because I have a friendly disposition. We start off as friends and plus you can relate. It's only at this later stage of my life where it's cut off gate. Like I just don't suffer fools at all because girl, after you've been drug and a run through, you know what it is. So, um, but in any case, this was in my 20s. This was someone that I cut off. I even let Lexus spin spin the block that were toxic to a certain degree just because I, they, you know, they, they weren't that detrimental to me and I had been working on my boundaries. But when that happened with that one particular ex, I knew for a fact I was never going to look back. They were so toxic. They were so trying to dim my light. They were so trying to ruin my life. They had nothing going for them. I had clocked them completely right, yeah? And I had no business being with them. Even their sister was like, you should not be with my sister she's a mess what are you doing with her like these were questions asked and you know guys sometimes we can be in those um relationships and feel like the world is against us and people are trying they hate our love that song i'm hearing big sean and um queen something they hate our love that is the place that you know a toxic dude or girl could get you into being like they hate our love because we're like so magical over here with our toxicity no anyway I knew that that person was not healthy for me, and it was one of the first times that I'd heard all of the people. Like, I literally had a friend group at the time that sat me down and did an intervention about this girlfriend. I've never had that happen before. I've had intervention (laughs) for meds before, Um, especially as I've been dealing with my struggles here lately. I was taking too much Tylenol, y'all. You know me, I always spill my own tea. And I had had a medical intervention from a PA, a pharmacist, and um, uh, a doctor, and a nurse that were like, you trying to die? You trying to leave this earth? (laughs) So anyway, we fixed it. But that's the only other intervention I've ever had. It was about this person who I was dating. So I knew that uh, when I left them, I was going to have to leave. Like everyone else could see that they were toxic and terrible for me. But, um, I never looked back, but what, but the sister said something to me about it. Um, and they were very clear about the fact that this was, this was a very toxic situation for me and they could see it coming from a mile away now. Um, and they, and she said to me, this is, this is the point I got off track here. What she said to me was, you guys are not good for each other. We were toxic. Yeah. 
sometimes you can date somebody and that's a that's a dynamic that you'll traffic in and she was like you guys aren't good for each other she was like there's a better person out there for you and she was you know when she started it with there's a better person out there for her because it's her sister so she was gonna ride for her sister right let me spoiler alert and tell you how this went 20 years later she's her sister she's gonna ride for her sister she was like have you ever considered that there might be a better person for her to date because the sister at first was just you know being a hater in the way that sisters can be and whatever i was like okay maybe you're right but girl can i tell y'all girl girls, girls and guys, that hurt my feelings, because I was like, well, I'm so good to her, and I'm trying, I was paying all the bills, and I was, doing, like, she was a total, you know, grifter, so I was like, but what do you mean, and she was much older than me, you know, story of my life, and all that stuff, I was like, but what do you mean, and I was hurt, but it was something I needed to hear, so I'm going to say that to you, because sometimes that little bit of poison is something that we need to take in order to get through, and here's the thing, though, trust your intuition, I knew that I wasn't the problem in this girl's life. I knew that she was a problem that carried her problems with her everywhere she went. This woman, rather, because she was a woman. So I knew that she was a person that carried her problems with her everywhere she went. The sister said that to me, but it was like cold water in my face. It shook me awake. I needed to hear it. So I'm saying that to you here. There's a better person for that, meaning their level. Oh, go check out that video. I have it up here. It's called Water Meets Its Own Level. Sometimes we think like, why can't, why won't they love you? You were pouring the juiciest, best... <laughs> As my little uh, goddaughter says, the goodest, the goodest, uh, the goodest love. Not a word, guys. But you're pouring the juiciest, best, good love over somebody. Just honey, just honey. Oh, I'm hearing that song, Honey, from Robin. Oh, it's a full channel this morning. Um, oh, sometimes, what is it? You won't get what you need. Sometimes you get what you need. Sometimes, baby, I got what you want. Sometimes you don't get what you need, but you get what you want. I don't know. That song, Honey, is so sexy. It's on my vitamin D playlist, y'all. That's a sexy, sexy song. However, it is about understanding that we can be immersed in sometimes the thing that is actually really right for us. It may not be what we manifested. Sometimes you need to hear that the person is going to find better for them. But listen, everybody's so creative. Don't forget it. What that means is that they're going to find somebody that's a little vibrational like them. You high vibrational empaths and empaths past queens and kings don't understand that sometimes you're pouring all of this good juicy love and energy onto people that don't want that that are used to toxicity that are that feel smothered by all of your love okay and so i was taking good 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 care made a house made a home was building furniture had good curtains okay in my 20s to this person who was much older than me and i think she was in her 40s when i was in my 20s and she was a hot mess and never had got her life together but guess what spoiler alert still didn't get her life together so the sister said that to me hurt my feelings and i started to open my eyes to see sat down with the friend group they gave me the intervention that was a surprise it was supposed to be a night of like we're gonna have taco nights and margaritas and then here i am in tears and they're like oh, we need to talk to you about kim and i was like okay okay anyway um anyway sometimes life comes at you fast but what i will tell you guys is this it was never meant to last everybody's so creative it was never meant to freaking last and fast forward the sister that said that to me and i still have a relationship to this day i'll be visiting her out in the midwest she just moved to this day she always jokes with her friends i got monette quote unquote in the divorce we were not married that girlfriend and i but she was like i got monette into the divorce she made that joke for years so much so she cut that sister out of her life because of the levels of toxicity that that sister trafficked in trying to ruin her marriage all kinds of stuff okay my, my the sister is mar was married and, and she was trying to ruin her marriage and intervene and spill her tea and all of that stuff the sister cut that girl off i cut her off and was like fine walked away in my 20s years later the sister cut her off as well she couldn't come to her house all kinds of stuff to this day because i'm still friends sometimes it'll come up out of the sister's mouth just like she'll mention it because it's her sister and i'm not gonna hate like if i'm spending time with her i'm visiting with her mm, oh i heard from Kim, or she's now in a home, or she's, you know, homeless again, or whatever, girl, a mess, it's still a mess, okay? That sister is older than my friend, that is, I would call this woman my friend, and a dear confidant sister in her own right at this point, but I wasn't wrong for my assessment that this person was a loser, also, that I needed to cut them out of my life. Your angels will give you all these taps, and sometimes it'll be cold water in your face, maybe someone needs to hear that. I needed that cold water on my face from that sister, who I just thought was a hater, but she, I had assessed correctly that there was someone better for her. Low vibrational that could be in the streets with her, that could be hustling and doing things and that could be addicted. That wasn't my life. It wasn't my life path. So the best thing that could happen between us was the breakup. And the break was intense. And it happened, but it needed to. And that's the one, one of the few exes, I, there's a couple of them, that I just was like, 
mm -mm. get someone else to completely do it. I never, ever talked to her again. When she friend requested me and did all that stuff, I never even would be her friend. There are some people that I would allow that with to a certain degree because I could manage their level of toxicity, but not with her. That was a really important lesson for me. But here's the thing. I had eyes on it correctly. I was like, this person is basura for sure. And 25 years later, 20 years later, I'm not wrong. Still could talk to the sister and the, the status reports, though I don't ever inquire about it, come up because the sister... And she's not rubbing it in my face, because be careful when people do stuff like that to you. I don't like that. But it's her sister, so she still cares about her and all of that, as I would expect. And so every once in a while, if I'm spending a holiday with a sister, or if I'm over for dinner, or something like that, she's like, mm, girl. Anyway, yeah, Kim was just trying to come over, and I just couldn't let her, because she was a mess. I didn't miss it at all. I didn't miss anything. Maybe someone needs to hear that. You didn't miss out on anything. You may have been like, I was so in love with this person and whatever. I was never in love with Kim. I never, I always knew that. Kim and I settled into one another. It was just, it was never love. It was weird, but it was a time in my life. You know, that time when you want a couple and I was in that mood. So I did that. But what I'm going to tell you is I missed nothing. There was no way that I was going to fix her. Someone here needs to hear this. You are not going to fix the person that you were with. You are not going to make them become a more evolved person. Sometimes we're in people's life in a transient way just to bring them a lesson, to show them some level of their own toxicity, for them to show us a level of our own toxicity. Empath, spray yourself with your own tea. I super have had toxic ways before, codependencies, people please, all types of shit that I still work out every day of my life. But it's diminished greatly. However, comma, it was because it was pointed out to me and because I had to work through it. We're never, we never stop working till the day we die. But someone of you may have been holding on to, I could have helped fix this person. Some of you are smart, <laughs> and that doesn't mean that you're not smart if you held on to that belief. But some of you realize that you had to cut these people off. You were never going to fix them. After years and years of trying and having circular conversations, it was never going to go anywhere. I, I, I really want you to pay attention to circular communication. If you feel like you're not getting anywhere with anybody and you feel like you're going around and around in circles, pay attention. That shows up right at the beginning. We just override it because of attraction. That is one of my big lessons in this life is knowing my version of an override. Like I'll just push the ignore button can we talk? Spray yourself with your own tea. I will push ignore when I'm attracted to somebody. But my angels at this point in my life, they're like, you have real work to do. They don't even let me push ignore more than once or one or two, okay? You know, that's the news button where you can hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Because communication is hugely paramount to me. I don't know what it is for you. Everyone has a different love language. My Venus, it's important to know where your Venus sits. Oh, this is all kinds of messages this morning. Where your Venus sits dictates what kind of way you love, like to be loved, and the way that, a manner of which, like, how you have your own game. Like, we all have a little level of, like, swag and game, yeah? And and Venus expresses that completely. Maybe a video that needs to be made. Always these ideas. And now I'm going to be sitting still, maybe for a little bit. I have some traveling to do again here shortly for, with some clients. But listen, here's the deal, guys. Venus is how you express yourself and how you get love. For me, my Venus is in Gemini. So communication means everything to me. It doesn't matter what configuration the person is that I'm attracted to, as I am very sapiosexual because of that Venus in Gemini. I care about ideas, communication, spirituality. I want to go deep. I want to talk about things into the night all that stuff. That's how I fall in love and how I feel good and nurtured. When I have confusing conversations and shit just is going circular, that's a huge turnoff for me specifically. That might be a t not be a turnoff for you, but I will say it's a warning sign for anybody, no matter what sign or where your Venus sits or whatever you do there. If you're having circular conversations and you can't get anywhere with somebody, and that is something to pay attention to. With that Kim girl that I was with, I was like trying to teach her better behaviors and like, we're going to get this together. And I was killing myself going in circles and circles and circles. Pay attention to that. Wherever Venus is in your chart though, that's a heads up. Maybe today, go to Cafe Astrology. I have a link over in my about page and, and run your chart. Put in your information. It's very simple little information. You need to know your date, birth, time, place, da 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 da, your name, and see where Venus sits in your chart because that's going to, and read it. Because when the printout comes, when, when they like tabulate me here, Boop, 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 boop. when they tabulate whatever your chart says, they will say your Venus sits in blank and it will be in this position, in this sign, in whatever. You don't need to know about the placement more than you need to know about like what sign your Venus is in because that's going to tell you a lot about how your love is and the love that you receive and the love that you're given, how you... um manage that. So someone needs to hear that if you're getting into matters of the heart. You need to know how you love. For me, I want to go deep with conversation and connection, but I feel the most supported and loved 
in situations where people communicate well with me. I feel neglected. It doesn't matter if all the sex is happening, if all this or all, all of that. If we can't communicate or there's consistent miscommunications, for me, I'm out of the game. Um, I don't get it because to me it is a game then at that point. I'm like, I don't understand this. That may not be a priority for you again. If your Venus is in Taurus, you might care about having great food with someone, great sex. Taurus is all about sensuality. If your Venus is in Scorpio, it might be about taboo. It might be about the obsessive, quiet thing between you two, you know, like that kind of thing. Everybody has different um, things that they would go for. If your Venus is in Aquarius, you might want to travel the world and like feed homeless kids or inoculate babies in China, whatever. Like that's very humanitarian energy of Aquarian love. You would have a diverse, you would probably be with someone that's not of your same, um, you're more attracted to people that are diverse. It doesn't mean you couldn't line up if your Venus is in Aquarius with somebody who is, uh, very much your same ethnicity, but it means that you would be attracted to some level of diversity, even especially at the second part of your life. When 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 we hit the mid part of our life, our Venus really gets activated for what we really are attracted to. So you might find that you have a new friendship. Like I think of you actually being my bestie. Uh, she's an Aquarius. I don't know where her Venus sits specifically, but it makes very much sense that at a certain point in her life that our friendship happened because we're very different. We literally couldn't be more night and day. However, but that is something that would happen for Aquarius energy, especially the way they love. So the way she loves me as a friend, it was meant for her to have a diverse friend in her life. It is something inevitable for Aquarian energy. I'm going to run down them all because we're talking about it now. If you're dealing with Venus in Capricorn, you're going to be someone that loves a slow build of a relationship in long longevity. Capricorn likes to put in the work and they are dutiful and honor bound. So it's not a lot of splash and panache there with Cap, with my Cappies. But the to be loved by a Cappy is to feel like you probably have one of the best spouses eventually because they are not going anywhere. If that's something that you prize, that will be something that makes you um, not feel scared. Also, I'm hearing it's something that you will it will anchor you. It can be too anchoring for me because of all my placements. I have a cappy husband, even though I, that's not where his Venus sits. But it means that um, when I wanted to take flight sometimes and disappear, and I'm a traveler and all that stuff, it's something even recently, I, this is just a couple days ago, actually just yesterday, up in Syracuse with his family, and we were together, and everyone was talking about my recent travels and stuff like that, and I had finally posted about them and everything, and my family knew as well, and his mother said to me, we were there to celebrate his mother's 81st uh, or 82nd birthday, and his mother said to me, like, how come Dale doesn't go with you? And I'm like, well, ma'am, you raised your son. He's a homebody, like, through and through. He's not gonna go with me. You know, I was like, you know your son doesn't like to travel. My husband likes to be at home, and that's it. But I like to travel, and that was something where he wanted me to kind of, like, be in alignment. So this is why I'm saying to you, if you had someone with Venus and Cappy, they're going to want you to sit, sit at home. They're homebodies, for sure. And even though, again, that's not where his Venus sits, that, those traits come through and they shine there. And so we had to, sometimes he grounded me in a way that it helped me really blossom in my career. He didn't have anything to do with my career, but just his energy was grounding for me in the best way. So I was able to sit myself home and sit down many years ago and really start to focus and really build a routine. That was a beautiful energy of my Cappy. Um, however, there have been moments of disagreement because I always Always want to take flight and he's like safety for you is when you're by my side that's what makes sense to him and I'm like no no, no I'm gonna travel and I was brought into his life specifically to teach him that lesson guys understand that about Venus too your Venuses don't have to line up in order for you to understand and learn about love I was there to challenge him about release he needs to know how to let someone go and know that I'm gonna come back home yeah so we made our rules and made what works for us but what I'm telling you is that I also need to learn how to sit my ass down so both things are true that's the beautiful thing about relationships is they not only will mirror you, but they will also reflect differently from you, and they will make you have to do work where you have to stretch and grow into the other person's position. Let's keep going. Um, Venus and beep, 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 Leo. <laughs> Travel the world, splashy, um, likes to be seen, uh, for sure, that energy of Leo magnanimous. That's the thing people don't understand about Leo energy, is when Leo's love, and I am Leo, so I can speak from this, but Leo and Venus means that you're, the way that you would fall in love is that someone would be paying a lot of attention to you. You're kind of like, you know, gifts and a lot of nice things, and even if it's not nice things per se, thoughtful things. Leos love thoughtfulness, too. That's a huge, big thing for us. It always seems like it's always just splashy, but no, it's really about the thought, and that's the thing. I'm even smiling thinking about it, because the thing 
things that have made me the happiest weren't uh, monetary things. It was like thoughtfulness, like a card, stuff like that is a delight for a Venus and Leo energy. Um, and, and, and special moments and occasions and meals shared together, stuff like that. That's Venus and Leo energy. If you're dating a Venus and Leo, that energy would be like, you guys go out to dinners and you sit down. That kind of stuff makes Venus and Leo feel really happy and grounded. Um, if you're dealing with Libra, Venus and Libra, the Libra rules partnership. So if you're dealing with a Venus and Libra um, energy, you're dealing with somebody who wants to be together, who likes companionship. You guys would have couple besties. That kind of stuff happens with Venus and Libra. They like partnering and having like dinners with other people, not in any swingy, thruppily way. Just like a togetherness, it makes them happy. A double date is something that would happen with a Venus and Libra initially. And then you could obviously carve out your own way. They are, um, are going to communicate really well with you. And they will fall in love with someone who communicates well. They like easy and breezy, and they like to look good, too. That's the thing. Venus and Libra would be people that are really attractive, and so that may be something that pulls you in regarding their attraction, or that's how they would be attracted to you. If we were dealing with Venus and Sagittarius, oh, Venus and Sagittarius, well, this is the Lotharios, so these are people that may want to run wild, they may need a long leash, just to understand that if you're dealing with someone who has a Venus and Sagittarius, they want fun, they want adventure, this is someone you want to take hiking, this is someone that you want to like go, go to an escape room with on a first date that's going to really stimulate and connect you guys at first and then that needs to be built into the relationship because Sagittarius Venus and Sagittarius can get bored they can love but they need to do it on their own accord they take a long time and they need a long leash to get connected and to to be intimate in a way that's going to make you feel validated but Venus and Sagittarius is like let's play essentially so great sex all that stuff but let's play that needs to be built in if you want to feel like you're enough and if you want to um, feel like they're enough for you so, okay so Venus and Sagittarius is that who have I missed someone's screaming it out they're like you haven't done this Venus and Virgo Venus and Virgo cares about a work ethic they care about dating somebody who has a good work ethic they care about somebody who is going to bring home money it's not just about how much money and they want to get rich off of you they want to know that you have your own work to do and your own thing that you're passionate about. They're very dedicated that way. They also are a bit of a control freak. So if you want to date a Venus in Virgo, you relinquish to them, like picking the date and things like that. That's what you'll do. I think there needs to be a more in-depth video, but I'm just touching on it because it's coming through. Um, so Venus and Virgo cares that much about being with you, but they don't want you to cramp or crowd them. They like relationships, okay? But they need to, like, come to them of and in their own accord. Venus and Gemini, y'all know me. Communication, communication, baby. <laughs> if it's not talking, I don't want it. And if it's not clear, I don't want it. And if I can't, I like a high contact, and that is something, so I'm going to speak from my thing, but Venus in, 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 Sag uh, Venus in, in Gemini likes high communication, and high contact. So they're a person that's going to be texting you all day or communicating with you. Like random stuff too. It's not like my adore, I love you more. It's like random like stuff, like pop culture stuff, like whatever's going on, metaphysical stuff. Whatever you're into with a Venus and Gemini, if you're into someone like that, just like little tidbits make them feel delicious. And I can speak for myself from that. So just like little informational things make them feel delicious. It's so funny. I think about my husband courting me. His Venus is not in Gemini. He is not a talker. So funny. So what he would do, <laughs> and I just think of all the effort he put in, God bless his soul, when we were dating, we were not having like chatty conversations. So this is very different for me. My pull to my life partner and my husband was a primal one because, primal in all the ways, y'all. Primal in all the ways. However, because like Capricorn energy, also Venus is Capricorn, very lusty. You might be surprised. They are very unsuspecting about how they they are physically and sexually. They're pretty excellent because Capricorn is very good at everything they do in that regard. But talking was not what he was good at. So he would read me recipe cards. <laughs> from like Publix or whatever it was, wherever he would get it. And he would call me and then he would like work it into the conversation and then we'd be going over something and he, because Capricorns love food. So Venus and Capricorn, a good home cooked meal. That's the way to their heart. Uh, if you have a Venus and Capricorn person, you're seeing, and he would read me recipe cards and I figured out what he was doing and he didn't know how to connect with me. He's not metaphysical. He's not spiritual, but we had a destiny. We had a thing. And so I remember that he tried, you know, it's so funny. Love languages are different. And I remember thinking back to that. And I remember thinking how adorable it was at the time that he would try to communicate with me. And he was like, I don't know what to say. And I was in culinary school. So he found a way and God bless it. That's what I mean by the way Venus and Capricorn loves will touch your heart because they will pay attention to you. 
and figure out things for you. It may not be the thing that just delights your full soul, but they have put effort in. That's Venus and Capricorn for sure. They're going to put time and energy in. And so he did. And that was very sweet. And I will never forget that. It just came to my remembrance just now. I haven't thought about that in a lot of years, but that's what he did. He wrote a recipe card to me, which wasn't the stimulating conversation of metaphysicals and spirituality and deep occultism and sexuality and all the things that I'm used to that would really pull me into somebody. It was him trying. It was communication. He was like, let me just, I have, let me say words to you. I don't know. He didn't understand my love language was words of affirmation. It was new, but his angels guided him. They're like, you got to do something here because she's got to hear words in order for her to stick and stay. So it was really funny. Anyway, so that's that. Who have I forgot here? Venus and Pisces. Ah, dream a little dream with me. If you are in love with a Pisces who has a Venus in their in, or a Pisces in Venus um, personality type or even a Pisces sun sign um, dream a little dream with me dream 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 they want to lay on the couch they want to connect they want skin to skin time they want to be in your space they want to be in your face they want to do everything with you Venus and Pisces wants to mesh with you also Venus and Pisces can have masochistic relationships you guys have to be careful with that because of Venus and Pisces that isn't healed will introduce some levels of toxicity to the relationship in some kind of way. That's a thing that is like a warning. When I think of this, I think of Rihanna, who is a Pisces. We saw the trajectory of her relationships. Nothing was asked for or given, but there was a reason that she was attracted to a certain person in a certain place until she healed and then elevated. And now we see her on the other side of that Venus and Pisces energy where she's in a loving connection, but she's very much in control of it. Very different energy. Abuse has never been a thing that followed her through her life because she dealt with the lower side. We all have that duality. Okay, but Venus and Pisces is as prone to masochistic or addictive relationships, and that's why the positive is the full enmeshment and addiction in the positive way. Codependency is a thing that can happen to Venus and Pisces too. So how you spin that positively is if there's a Venus and Pisces in you, or you're attracted to that, a lot of time spent together is a way to their heart, and they really and 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 new experiences and a little bit of travel that that makes them feel really seen and loved. Who am I forgetting here? Venus and Aries, adventure, hot sex. <laughs> communication but quick interactions Venus and Aries has no patience I'm thinking of Jay-Z I have no patience and I hate waiting mommy get your ass in here that's very much Venus and Aries Venus and Aries pin people quickly so if you're ever noticing an Aries sun date or someone with Venus and Aries when I say pin people quickly they get into relationships and they're immediately coupled okay that is the thing that Venus and Aries will do but they need excitement and they may have a career or something that leads them to that so I'm thinking of military I'm thinking of municipalities in the in the city or the state uh, Venus and Aries might bring you, like, that might be part of your first date. So whatever they do in their career might be something they include you with. Venus and Aries also like the idea of family and having, like, a little cloister, something hiding away behind the scenes of their very adventurous life. I'm trying to go down the line. So we hit Pisces, we hit Aries, we hit Taurus. Venus and Taurus, we talked about that. Sensuality, uh, great food, great wine. Um, you guys can do couples, uh, massages, Venus and Taurus, loves anything that has to do with the five senses, music. Share your music. If you share music with a Venus and Taurus, you have won their heart. Because now, see, the thing about Venus and Taurus is they have a superpower. When Venus is in Taurus or you're dealing with a sun sign Taurus, their music is like the direct correlation and connection to their, to their heart and to their love. And so what I want you to understand about that is that they know so much about you so it's almost like if you tell them the five songs you're listening to they have already assessed your personality type it's kind of like a weird superpower that they have uh i really enjoy my venus and taurus friends or taurus sun friends because music is a way that we can we cannot talk for years and then i could be like hey i'm gonna do mushrooms this weekend and they'll be like here's a playlist like that's it and that's and, and I, they know everything that's going on in my life by what i'm telling them about my music taste it's really a really cute and fun exchange that i love with my Taurus uh, friends, but also Venus and Taurus energy. Let's go next. Venus and Gemini. We covered that. Uh, Venus in Cancer. Venus in Cancer. Home is where the heart is. So for a Cancerian energy, they want a partnership. They're kind of catty too. So what that tells you is this. They are very territorial over their love. They don't want you to love anybody else. They want you to love them. And they're very um protective in a very sweet way. But harm is where the heart is. Venus and Cancer will want you to be home. They like their cave. Like Netflix and chill for Venus and Cancer is like the delight of their soul. Please lay in my bed with me. Let's cuddle. Let's just be together. That is really sweet. So if you are dating someone with that's a Cancer son or with Venus and Cancer, 
please understand that they're not just trying to sleep with you, but their comfortable place is what delicious thing are we going to eat? Venus and Cancer are very ruled by their mood swings regarding to food, okay? So whatever feels nostalgic and homey and comfortable for them, whatever their mama might have cooked them or their daddy or whoever loved and nurtured them in childhood, that will come into play in your relationship. And not in any weird way, but just in like a comfort way. So, you know, whatever. I'm thinking of grilled cheese. That's a comfort for me. I think of my mom, but I'm not Venus and Cancer. But like, they will have comfort foods and things that make them feel very attracted to you around food and cuddling and like connection and just being home. They need a lot of affection, physical affection. Venus and Cancers do. They're associated with the sign of mother, so they may mother you. That can go good or bad, depending on what the love relationship is. It could be nagging or it could be loving and it could feel clo cloistered and suffocating. I think it's raining outside, cloistered and suffocating or whatever. But the thing is, Venus and Cancer wants to be up underneath you. Understand that. Venus and Leo, we talked about splashy love, fabulous state, travel. Like, Venus and Leo, as Leo, I can tell you this. Um, I'm the type of person upon dating somebody where I like to travel regarding that. So, like, I would try, I, like, I was literally just last night looking up a restaurant to see if I could get reservations because it's a special place. And if you, and if I got the reservation, I would have to fly there. And I was like, well, I really want this. I want to manifest this this year. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to book the reservation. I don't even know who I'm going to go with, okay? Um, this, this will be a soulmate date, but I don't even know who I'm going to go with yet. I don't even know if it's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to manifest, but, and it's for two. It has to be because the restaurant is really funny. It's kind of like a Willy Wonka restaurant. The place is called Alinea and it's in Chicago. But I know I want to do this. And and sometimes things work out. Sometimes they don't. But I've been looking at it and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to go do this. Um, and so I will book the place if I can, if it feels right to me. And then I'm going to figure out how or whom or how I go. Because I have to go with somebody. Because that's what the man who owns the restaurant says. Okay? They don't do parties of one at all. He has all these weird things about numbers having to be even and whatever. It's very interesting. Go check it out. I promise you I'm not making a thing of it up. But that is um, Venus in Leo. Okay? So I'm a Leo son, but that's how I love and connect with friends or soulmates or people that I am, you know, in that kind of space with. And so that would be a date, even a, like if it's romantic, that would be a date for Venus in Leo is let's fly to a city and have an incredible dinner in a place because that's how Leo loves. We're kind of extra that way. You know, so somebody else, they'd be like, that's a lot. But the us were like that was just enough and it was memorable yeah <laughs> memorable af and this place is super memorable i'm delighted to go this is a birthday thing for me that i'm going to make happen no matter what however that is how venus and leo love so if you're dating someone with a venus and leo and you're like oh my gosh they wanted to take me on a helicopter or they want to take me on a private flight or they wanted to jump get on a economy uh you know what do you call it a c c commercial flight that is a venus and leo move for sure for sure for sure we're good for that you know again it's not me as a Leo, I can speak for how I know I have loved my friends and loved my special somebodies. I'm a person of like extravagance to a certain degree. Um, and so you have outlets for that and Venus and Leo will definitely make that be part. Leo also rules the fifth house, which is whimsy, children, um, fun, creativity, dates, dating, dinner parties. If you end up being married to or in a relationship with a, a Venus and Leo, expect a dinner party to happen. <laughs> they are hosts. Beautiful things will be picked out. Whether, no matter what your case is, whether it's eclectic and you got it from Ikea, whether it's from Restoration Hardware, whatever. The, whether it's Baccarat plates, for Venus and Leo, it might be a Baccarat plate. Look it up. Because <laughs> um, Venus and Leo likes extravagance and opulence. They're always channeling their inner kings and queens. So the way to someone with a Venus and Leo's heart is to speak to their inner king or queen. If no one else in the world sees them that way, but you identify that in them, they are more apt to lean in to you, okay? And so even in my little life as a Leo, I remember my mother worked as a... Um, as a maid when she like escaped my father because my father was wild as a Taliban and so she worked as a living maid because she was like I can't pay rent and do all this so I gotta do I gotta be a living maid and I was back in the 80s when she could and I remember us living with a Jewish family and they called me Miss Monette or Princess Monette and that is just a, a thing that sticks out to me I was like because they were a Caucasian family I was like why were they why were they like that with me well when I got my chart studied later that was something that was part of my destiny and it's something that has followed me my whole life reverence paid to me that 
that is Leo energy. And it's not something that I required. I was a baby. I couldn't even talk. But that was, I remember um, the pictures and I remember my mom telling me the stories and whatever the case may be. But that's something that followed me to some degree when I was in better spirits or in higher vibrations that people would bestow that thing upon me. If you're around a Leo energy, Venus, Sun, or otherwise, you'll find yourself doing that. And it's not something that they will request. It's a carriage that just happens because Leo energy is what it is. But if you want to get to the heart of a, of a, Lena, a Leo and Venus, compliments are the way, my good lover, my good sis, my good friend, my good brother, my good mother. If you want to get to somebody uh, with a Venus and Leo energy, well, Leo's energies are very susceptible to compliments, okay? We love them. <laughs> we love them. We love them. To such a degree that we have to work on not letting that be a love bomb situation that can get us carried away because certainly I have had that happen for myself where I got caught up in the rapture of the love bomb because with a Venus and Leo it's very easy to give them a hazy love bomb that way so know your powers there be very careful but communication and 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 uh, compliments is what I meant to say here. But communication, too, um, is a big thing for v Venus in Leo. So that's something that you will either treat them like or do. If you date someone with Venus in Leo, it's not something they'll foist upon you. You'll just find yourself gravitating into that. Um, especially for the Leo males, I notice that they end up positioning themselves as kings. Whether they mean to or not, whether they are good kings or not, <laughs> benevolent or deserve it, they find themselves in that position where they will have little kingdoms in their family. They like a wife. They like that. Like, they're very traditional. Almost a bit chauvinistic is what I would say, okay? Um, and also, listen, as a lady <laughs> who is dating ladies, I can say that to a certain degree when I... I'm dating a lady, I would say that, and I know this is terrible, here's me spilling my own tea, as you should, always spray yourself with your own tea, there is a bit of, not chauvinism in me, but I definitely, depending on whether I'm dating a feminine woman or a masculine woman, I actually play into the roles that are set there, so when I'm dating masculine women, I am a different kind of energy, when I'm dating a feminine woman, I am a different kind of energy, I might be more in my masculine energy, um, to a certain degree, and that's in the way that I move. It doesn't mean that I'm not wearing <laughs> dungarees and overalls, but I take charge. That's that's what I want you to understand. So if you're dating a Venus and Leo, understand where they're at, well, no matter what sex you like or what you're into, the way that a Venus and Leo shows that they love you is they'll kind of take control to a certain degree because they want things, they want to make it nice for you. They want to show that they can provide for you. So allow Venus and Leo to be a leader to a certain degree. You will have their heart a compliment and allow them to lead. Bam. Done. That's the magic for Venus and Leo. All right. Next, we did Venus and Virgo. Work ethic, work ethic. Uh, Venus in Libra. Uh, partnership, togetherness, shared moments, couples trips, all of that stuff. That's Venus in, in Libra. But partnership and being committed to that. They want to grow with you. They want to be with you. Venus in Libra wants to have fun and adventures, too. Understand this, too. you got to be secure if you're dating a Venus in Libra because they will be flirted with. They're very attractive. People are going to come up to them. People are going to like them. People are going to find them attractive. The thing that I love about Venus and Libra energy, because I've counseled people that are and have had friends that are Venus and Libra, is they are so loyal to their partners. So it doesn't matter who's flirting. They're big flirts, though. So you got to have a strong constitution and a backbone because they are going to flirt, okay? you will, They will. They can't even help it. It's like breathing to them, okay? Just like to a Leo you know, a travel date is like a thing to them. It's just a thing that they don't even think about. Venus and Libra is going to be flirting it out. And you better be secure. That's what you need to know. If you're dating someone that's a Leo son or Venus and Leo, uh, Libra, excuse me, they will be flirts. And they, it means nothing in a bad way is what I mean. It means nothing, meaning they are not trying to hurt your feelings and they're not going to leave you. That's one of the things that I actually really learned about them. And I want to pass it along to you. So if you find out that someone has a Venus in their Libra, they are not going anywhere, especially once they commit to you. Got, they're the sweetest, best partners in the best way. They rule partnership, literally. Most weddings happen around October and September because that is wedding season. What people don't realize astrologically, that is partnership season. Literally, Libra rules partnership. So all those weddings happen at that time. A lot, a great majority. Like It's a statistic. And so it's really something funny that I think you should understand. Do not think that they're going to leave you for another woman or man. They just they're admired. They are Venusian. They are ruled by beauty. Even if they're not conventional to anybody else, something will be exuded out of them where everybody's like, I gotta get close. So enjoy that. And you gotta be a secure partner. 
I have dated people that were Libras. I've also dated people that had Venus and Libras. And the way that my security works is I'm fine with it because I like at the end of the night going home with whomever my person is and knowing that it's just us and we have our own little cocoon and bubble. It's really hot to me. But not everybody can deal with that. And so you have to know what your constitution is. A Cancer Venus in uh, Venus and Cancer could not date a Venus in Cancer or Venus in Libra because there would be high levels of clashing and insecurity. A Cancer wants to know that you are just for them. That Venus and Cancer is like super territorial and to almost like a crabby bitchy way. I don't know how else to spit. It's, it, it'll feel annoying. It wouldn't feel sexy like, oh, they're hot and they're jealous. Venus and Scorpio will make you feel it's hot and jealous but also crazy. We'll get to that next. But Venus and Cancer and those two dating, it would be a disaster. That's why you need to know your Venus placements because eventually the Cancer is going to feel like you're you're cheating and you're not faithful. The Venus and Libra is like, I'm just breathing. Flirting to them is like breathing. So you have to be a secure person to deal with that. Anyway, next. Venus and Scorpio. Sex. <laughs> what happens is Scorpio rules our sexual organs. It's not all that all Scorpio people are great lovers. But someone with a Venus and Scorpio will be a great lover. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they're going to figure you out. They're going to figure out what you're about, what you like. They are pleasers to a certain degree. And there's a certain element of control that they traffic in quite easily. Scorpio is a fixed sign. So Venus and Scorpio wants control too. They do. And it's sexy. So that's where we get into all the kinks, all the dominatrix shit. All, like, it's delicious. If you want to explore your sexual of Venus and Scorpio is the one for you. However, comma, let me give you the little addendum here. Obsession is what they traffic in. They rule the eighth house, eighth house. So if you sleep with, literally exchange sexual energy with a Venus and Scorpio, you're in for a penny, in for a pound. You will not go anywhere. Even if you think you want to go somewhere, they will have you as long as they want to have you. So you have to be very careful with that. I always like gauge that. I pay a lot of attention to all of that because I know once we make sexual energy with anybody of any sign, of any Venus placement, it's a wrap. You understand? To a certain degree. Because that is a fusing of our bodies and our energy. But even more so, the two signs I would say, Venus and Scorpio and Venus and Pisces. No coincidence that it's two water signs. Those two can be very addictive because they traffic in addiction as well. Both of those signs, okay? Regarding addictive natures, uh, secret addictions, things like that. But with Venus and Scorpio... Whew, that like Venus and Scorpio, I, I might do a video about the toxic part of why you want to date these Venuses. There's a lot going on there. It's not just that it's good sex. It's a total full immersion. If someone was Venus and Scorpio and you are dealing with one another, it is really powerful. So I weigh it because I say to you guys, be careful. People think they want that. You think you want that deep level of the undertow. That's what I call Venus and Scorpio is the undertow, that undercurrent. It pulls you right under and right in, before you know it, you're two miles down the shore. You're like, how did I get here? Um, and that can be lovely if both of you are on the same accord. But Venus and Scorpio's undertow doesn't stop um, when you want to, like, say the safe word. That's the thing about it. You are in. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you an example of a Scorpio person that you all watch. Diddy, take that, take that. Diddy's a Venus son, or excuse me, he's a Scorpio son. Puff, Diddy, Sean, Diddy, Puff, Daddy Combs. What do we know about everybody that gets close to, allegedly, Puff Daddy? Disaster abounds and or they are no longer around. Literally, a lot of people have died around Diddy. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Big Papa um, and everybody else. Um, Big Papa was a rapper. I love when you call me Big Papa. I only spoke once if they roll proper. Anyway, cleanest, meanest, penis. You've never seen this. Stroke of genius. Anyway, we love we love Big Papa. Uh, was he a Gemini or a Libra? I'm not sure. In any case, Christopher Wallace was an artist anyway. Life happened and we know the story with that. But Diddy is also renowned for his dating. Diddy dates people and he dates streams of people at a time. And people get under his thrall and even when they get away from him, they might have been there for 10, 13 years dealing with all kinds of craziness. I think of Cassie specifically. He, Cassie, uh, I've been waiting th it's me and you now. Y'all know her from that song. I've been waiting think I want to make a move right now. He developed her as an artist and then she just disappeared and became his like concubine girlfriend thing and he had all these other bitches and it was wild and she would talk about it later where she'd be like she would call women and be like so I heard you guys are dating now, but she wasn't going anywhere. Diddy is a Scorpio son through and through. He always keeps a litany of bitches, allegedly others too. We don't go, <laughs> I'm not getting up in his business fully, but he keeps a lot of people around him and he's always in dealing with all of the taboo. I think a really good thing, if you want to understand what you might be dealing with with the Venus and Libra, 
recently, this last Halloween, Diddy was the Joker. Whew. And when I say it was so brilliant, I was like watching Heath Ledger, who I think was probably the best Joker I've seen. Um, well, Keith Phoenix did a pretty good job too, but um, uh, the Joker, uh, yeah, um, it was his Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. And I think that that's what people get when they date a Venus and Leo that hasn't healed, oh, excuse me, Venus and Scorpio <laughs> that hasn't healed. Because there is this Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde appeal um, if they're not working on themselves and they're not in a higher vibration. So, But when you get in, there is no getting out. Just watching him that night on Halloween last year was eerie. I was like, whoa, this was the role you were meant to play. <clears throat> Diddy is actually an actor. He fancies himself that. He definitely did a raise in his son and various other things. So maybe he really got into character, but I don't think he had to work too hard to get into that character. That's the thing about Venus in Scorpio. It's taboo. It is sexy. It is interesting. But when you're in, you're going to be in. So be careful. If you have a choice not to sleep with someone with a Venus in Scorpio, unless it's really a mutually connected space, don't. Because you'll always want to be in that energy, or they may always want you to be in that energy. So it's like a heads up. I'm so grateful that I have the breadth of knowledge that I do, because it's really helped me navigate even my own. Even And here's the thing. I have been around Venus and Scorpio people and felt the undertow. That's what I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all from first-hand experience. I've been around these folks, and I have felt it. And, I, and I'm a powerful, strong person who has a breadth of knowledge and experiences. I study people. I have a high um, interest in like anthropological studies. I study humans for a living so that I can help you guys work through your problems. But even I, <laughs> and it doesn't mean that I'm more special than you, but with all of that information, I have been around three Venus and Scorpio people in my life, and there has never been not one that I haven't wanted to slip right into the undertow with. I have had to fight myself, and fortunately, I am well adept at standing in a current, but a current is always stronger than you, meaning I grew up in the Keys, I spent a lot of time in the water and swimming, and so I know what an undertow is. Actually, I have been pulled into a rip tide and cart. I know exactly how it works from a physical, physiological perspective. So when it was happening to me metaphysically, emotionally, or sexually, y'all... Uh, not even the strongest can reject it. I um I ended up dating one in my 20s and fascinating and interesting. Um, And then the other two, I actually knew like, ooh, I'm in the water, but I'm not going to go under because I knew that upon going under what, what it would be for me and how it would end up for me. Because once you get involved with those people, unless they want it to be happy, sometimes you end up as Cassie, okay? That's just what it is. Now, that doesn't mean that doesn't work for somebody else. A Scorpio in Venus, Leo, uh, Venus in Scorpio and a Venus in Pisces, a match made in heaven. They will just be bathing in each other's waters and drip, splash it around and it'll be delicious and magical forever and ever. Um, or it'll be toxic, really toxic <laughs> too, forever and ever. That could happen. But the undertow is a thing, guys. That's the one thing. You might... That's why you should know these signs and know what your person is because some people you'll feel like, oh, they're irresistible. You won't understand it. They have some other magic working in their favor for them. They might be magical too, but that Venus and Scorpio will be very alluring and tempting for anybody, any of you. It doesn't matter what sign you are. If you're next to a Venus and Scorpio, you're going to feel away. Anyway, so that's how you need to understand. And then you need to have your wits about you. So um, be if you can abstain from sexual, like actual swapping of any sexual energy, body, fluids, all of that stuff, you'll keep your wits about you in a better way and you'll be able to have clarity about whether you're really compatible. That's a really big thing that you should know if you're dating someone with a Venus and Scorpio. Abstinence or waiting a little bit before you guys get into sexual energy and connection is going to be really good for your mind and clarity because you will not just feel, because the undertow is going to undertow you anyway. You're going to feel it whether you're sleeping together or not. But once you're sleeping together, forget about any discernment, okay? I'm, don't say I didn't warn you. Anyway, so the next one is beep, 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 beep. We did Libra, we did Scorpio, we did Sagittarius. They are the players of the Zodiac, the Nine of Wands, and we did Capricorn. So that's it. All right, guys, I feel like I covered all of them. If I missed any one of them, please let me know. Aquarius, Aquarius, let me get into that a little bit. Aquarius, diversity, um, unconventional relationships. Aquarius can date multiple people at the same time and do pretty good with that. Uh, Venus in Aquarius. They uh, they like weird things. They might have interesting and different kinks. Um, 
uh, they like getting to know other people's family. A Venus in Aquarius or an Aquarius sun sign person is always very well liked by the other person's family, unless it's just some low vibrational person that's done no 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 work. People love Aquarius energies. Um, like people, like uh, this is something I've seen. People, family members, mothers and fathers love a Venus in Aquarius energy because they just come into the family and they feel like it right at home. They're really good with giving advice as well too. So if you're dating a Venus in Aquarius, they're gonna like advise you. That's something you should know. They're really good with that. Um, and if you advise them, they like that too because they like communication and they like the back and forth. Venus and Aquarius um, are eccentric, so they might date someone that is not like anybody else that you've ever seen and they're going to be okay with that travel is a big thing for them as well that's a big way to their heart and also friend groups like they never a venus in aquarius is never going to have been in their friend group so that's one thing you should know like let's say venus in cancer a Venus in Cancer dating a Venus in Aquarius is going to be a no bueno because Cancer is like, let's just be together. Venus in Aquarius and, or Venus in Scorpio, Venus in Aquarius, no bueno. Because Scorpio is like, I want to possess and own you fully. You're just with me. That's very Venus in Scorpio energy. Even if they're doing anything, look at Diddy. Diddy's always doing anything, but he always has many people indebted to just being in his energy. Right now, his newest person is Carisha, okay, from the the City Girls. He's got her complete act bad. That's a new song. He's got her completely caught up, and he's done had babies while they were dating, and she's like, we go together real bad. She Because if Venus and Scorpio will make you feel that about them, heads up, spoiler alert, you're going feel to feel like you go together real bad, and they're like, we don't go together at all. But they want you to think you go together real bad. That's just, just watch Diddy. If you have any questions about anybody that's Scorpio or Venus is Scorpio, pay attention to Diddy. That's all you need to know. All right. So, um, because Carisha said that on her show, she was like, we go together real bad. And then like two months later, he was having a baby. That part. Okay. Make it make sense. And she's still with him. Okay. Cause she's still with him because there's something delicious about it. That's why I'm like, don't sleep with them, y'all. <laughs> you can help it. Keep your loins to yourself. Cause you're going to have so much more clarity. Back to Venus and Aquarius. So. Venus in Aquarius and a Venus in Cancer would go well because Cancer wants you to just be part of their life and fully enmeshed into their little world, their friends. Venus in Aquarius is not giving up their friend group. They're not giving that up for you. So don't be offended. They're going to have 50, 11 people that they're friends with. It doesn't mean that they're going to not treat you well, but um, a Venus in Aquarius loves you in a more of an aloof way, okay? They are your lover. They are your friend. They will feed into you and connect with you and make you feel loved, but they are not about a meshment. So Venus in Pisces and a Venus in Aquarius, not going to work. Does that make sense? A Venus in Aquarius is very autonomous and they're the Mavericks and they have their own way about them and they're comfortable with that. They don't need a lot of validation because they are validated by the world. So just know that about a Venus in Aquarius. If you want to get to their heart, talk to them about interesting things, metaphysical things, uh, spiritual things, stuff like that. Uh, Venus in Aquarius is ahead of their time. They're progressive and they're future thinkers. They are not... Um, Venus in Aquarius also, too, is always going to be struggling with their entrepreneurial endeavors. Meaning, it doesn't mean struggle. What I mean is this. They don't do well working under other people. It doesn't mean that people with Venus in Aquarius don't. But they are people that should have this very particular job. They don't do well being micromanaged. So they're not going to do well being micromanaged in your relationship. So don't get into a relationship with a Venus and Aquarius person and then be like, oh my goodness, <laughs> how come I can't like boss them around? You're not going to. They are very smart and very strong. Um, and they will be correcting you to a certain degree, okay? Anyway, that's what you guys need to know. Now let me wrap it back to what we began with. Everybody's so creative. Whoever that message was for at the beginning of it, it still stands. Someone was pointing the fingers. It's like the, the double Spider-Mans that are pointing at each other. They were pointing the fingers at each other. You might have warned somebody. They got into a whole heap in helping in trouble. And they may be the word that I hate, stuck. The reason I say that is because sometimes people will do that. They're showing me the, the movie Oz or the series Oz that was on HBO that had Christopher Maloney in it. There was a scene there. So I'm going to talk about it, y'all where the one partner knew that he had the Hivstead, okay? I'm not going to say here on the thing, but he had the package, as we all call it, and know it to be the one of the more serious STDs. He gave it to him purposely because he wanted him to be forever connected. He also set him up and did all kinds of stuff so he would have to stay in jail, but he gave it to him purposely. Someone that you know has someone that they dealt with that knew that they had something going on with them and they wanted them to stay. I want you to stay, that's what I'm hearing, but in the most toxic way and they gave them something and then tried to make them think it was them you know heads up y'all you might have 
<laughs> dodge all kinds of bullets. So don't try to go back and be their friend and their lover and their secretary working every day of the week. That was not your cross to carry, okay? You have something better for you coming in and something better for you that you can manifest and that was not the place that you needed to be, okay? Your angels and your ancestors team knew what was best and they got you right the freak out of that thing because the freaks come out at night, that's what I just heard, and they didn't want you to be part of that thriller. Because <laughs> this is thriller, all that. It was thriller, it was a thriller, all right? And they didn't want you to see the end of that movie because it didn't play out at all good for you. They said they have more love. Better Venus is coming in for you. I, I think we covered all of them. Please scream out or comment below. As they scream like we're talking to each other. I You guys are my parasocial besties, right? So I literally never... Like, forget, I forget sometimes when I'm talking to you that you can't talk back to me. Please comment below if I forgot to say your Venus. And if you want to know the duality, the toxicity, comment below about that too. Maybe I'll make a video about that just specifically and do that on camera for you. Anyway, guys, so good sharing energy with you this morning. I'm going to get back to my meditating and my studying. That was a funny way to wake up this morning. Y'all are hilarious. And then I've got some clients coming up. I love you so much. Come back and join me next time. And we will continue to evolve together.